Freedom for the power of sin is our topic today. Welcome to Sunday School. My name is Dame Deborah David. Today we'll be looking at freedom from the power of sin. And our text is taken from the book of Romans chapter 1. And Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 23. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 23. And our central truth says believers can live righteously in Christ because they are no longer enslaved to sin. Believers can live righteously in Christ because they are no longer enslaved to sin. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Romans 6 verse 11 it says, Likewise, reckon you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The evangelism emphasis is that sinners can be set free from sin through Christ. Sinners can be set free from sin through Christ. We have three outlined here. The first one is dead to sin. The second is alive to Christ. And the third is servant of righteousness. Amen. From the day of Adam and Eve succumbed to the serpent wiles, they found themselves captive to the power of the knowledge of good and evil according to Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 7. Thus, the stage was set to free humanity from the power of sin through the perfect obedience of one man, which is of God's Son, Jesus Christ, who would stand in for the human race as both sacrifice and redeemer. So upon the announcement in Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 to 15, a conflict was established between the serpent and the seed of woman, Eve, Jesus Christ. But clearly the announcement declared that the seed would crush the head of the serpent. This final and firm declaration would open the door, uh, would open the door, would open the door of sin's prison and allow its captives to be set free. So Apostle Paul opened the chapter, the sixth chapter of his epistle to the Romans by asking an instructive question. It says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In the last few decades, we have had the emergence of super grace or hyper grace preacher who this question will also apply so aptly. In our days, only the most corrupt mind using the most perverted logic could argue that continuing in sin somehow honors the God who sacrificed his only begotten son to save people in the first place. Someone who wants to go on sinning because God's forgiveness of sin is guaranteed does not truly understand the true meaning of grace. No, 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 the seriousness of sin, no, what it means to be dead to sin and being alive to Christ and being a slave to righteousness. Now, let's quickly look at the first one, which is dead to sin. According to Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that the grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. That Jesus, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also should be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Thing. In this text, Paul opens his argument here by, by placing emphasis on the importance of knowing. If you don't know your entitlement, if you don't know what Christ has done on your behalf, 
you cannot have access to it. It is knowing that I have been freed from sin because I am dead to sin is critically important. See, my freedom, your freedom is fully paid for. Here, Paul is talking about something that has already been done, not what someone is going to do or an outgoing process, but a done deal. He asserts that Christians are dead in relation to sin because that Christ died for sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says, Paul says here, here that for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one spirit. And Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. These identify that as believers with Christ, we need to be pictured through baptism in the body of Christ at the moment of conversion. Also, water baptism by immersion, which is one of the tenets of faith, is the public declaration of our personal faith in Christ, which includes his death. So immersion into water symbolizes the burial. And after that meaning, our sins are buried. And so we are dead to sin. Summing up, therefore, Paul says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, that buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the walking of God, who raised him from the dead. That means... Christ's death is your death. His burial is your burial, and his resurrection is your resurrection as a believer. To be dead to sin means, one, to be freed from sin and his strongholds. Two, it means that you are united to Christ in death, burial, and resurrection. Three, it means that you are crucified with Christ and therefore cannot be alive to sin. Now let's look at the second outline which is alive to Christ. So what does it mean to be alive in Christ? Let us look at our text again quickly in Romans chapter 6 verse 8 to 14. It says now if we die with Christ we believe that we should also live with him knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him for the death that he died he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to god likewise you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin but alive to god in christ jesus our lord therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust and do not present your members as instrument of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. From the moment anyone believes, from the moment you believe and receive Jesus Christ, your present and future have been taken care of, guaranteed. Your death and resurrection in and through Christ gives you the power to live in him now and in the life to come. Our union with Christ starts with our death to sin and our life in Christ. Your union with Christ starts with your dead, being dead to sin and being alive in Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 says, For you died, and, in your, and your life is eaten with Christ in God. And continue, and you continue to, and, and, and you continue, the continuation of your life is with a life of perpetual and consistent identification with Christ. Consistent consecration with Christ in obedience and intentional practice of the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
In other words, the same grace that saved you, the same grace that saved us is able to teach you, is able to teach you to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lust, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world as evidence of being alive in Christ. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. You can pause that and read. See, your claim of being alive to Christ is mere delusion and illusion if your lifestyle does not reflect and showcase that of Jesus. Your heart belief must manifest in your character and the fruit you bear. For from the abundance of your heart, the mouth speak. Jesus knew no sin, yet he became sin and died for us. Satisfying the demand of sin, which is dead, once and for all, he also died to his power, forever breaking his dominion over all who belongs to God through his son. The reason we are alive in Christ See, when you are alive in Christ, you must not allow sin a place of dominion in your life. Sin has been rendered powerless, except you grant it power through the choices you make and your appetite. Now, let's quickly look at the third outline, which is serve, servant or slaves of righteousness. Romans chapter 6, verse 15 to 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 15 to 23 says, What then shall we say, because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly, certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that you thought that you that that but God be thanked that though you were slave of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. You have been set free from sin. You became slave of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Just as you presented your members as slave of uncleanliness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness what fruit did you have then in the things in the things of which you are now ashamed for the end of those things is death but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When you get born again, you are transformed from being slaves to sin to becoming slaves to God or slaves to righteousness. The 15th ver uh, verse of our text in the New King James Version it says, What then shall we say? What then shall we sin because we are under the law but, on, but under grace? Paul answered the same way he did in verse 1 to the same question. He said, Certainly not. Certainly not according to Bible scholars David Jeremiah. Um, this is a strong negative in the Greek, which means without any question. Absolutely, final and forever not. Grace does not free anyone to sin, but it frees believers from sin. When we obey scriptural truth from the heart and are intentional and deliberate in the practice of, this, of, 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 of sin, it means genuine, life-changing obedience to all times. As a believer, you must therefore present yourself as slaves to righteousness, that is, just as slaves have no authority over their lives, you must do it just with the same abandon as you willfully give, gave yourself to sin in the past. For the unbelievers, righteousness makes no demand on them. So, it should never, you should never be surprised when they behave wickedly. 
they know nothing else. But for us, for you believers, righteousness makes a daily demands on us. It makes a daily demands on you. Hence, we are to be slaves to righteousness at all times. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, our, life, our conclusion and life application of our text. Jesus taught that redemption and freedom from the power of sin was humanity's greatest need. Jesus declared in John chapter 8, verse 34, that whosoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And because the wages of sin is death, death in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, Jesus had to die for humanity. That was the only way that man could be redeemed and free from sin penalty and power. The Redeemer had to submit to death willingly in order to be released from its grasp. And this is exactly what Jesus did to free us from sin as believers. You share in Christ's death and, in, and resurrection. This union with him allows you as a believer to share the blessing of his resurrection, namely a new life in Christ in the present and in the future. Therefore, you must constantly think of yourself as a person who have died and have been made alive again in Christ. This means that your old self has been crucified with Christ and you are dead to sin. You should no longer allow your reign in your bodies for you to obey its evil desires anymore. At conversion, you intentionally and willingly agree to be God's slave and never to serve the devil's sin. You can serve only one master. You can serve only one master according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. All believers must therefore shift their allegiance and must therefore shift their allegiance to who they want to serve. The change must be total and complete. So we can be we can fully enjoy the freedom from the power of sin. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We have now come to the end of this class. If today is your first time joining and watching, you're welcome. Please subscribe, share this video. My name is Tim Dukwe Daily. Till I come your way some other time, do have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye.